Hello, I'm Paul Taylor from Trust Nature. So look at trustnature.com.au. I'm working on a project in Western Australia, uh, Christmas Island, which is an Australian uh, territory. It's an island actually quite close to Indonesia. It's equatorial and it's an old mining lease. So what we're doing is we're using natural, taking advantage of natural systems to produce biomass on the old mining lease that regenerates soil. Now we understand that tropical soils and temperate soils are very different soils or very different styles of nutrient management, processes of nutrient management. But what we're going to show you in, the, in this series of four or five videos is how to create a tremendous amount of biomass and build soil fertility as we're growing uh, food plants. So we're doing the, creating a, a natural competition between the rampant ground covers and the fruit trees and food plants to show that we can establish systems at low cost with low maintenance in a fast forward agricultural way. So it's affordable to regenerate highly degraded sites or non-fertile sites and build fertility. And we need, we want to do it, we need to do it, we need to establish systems within a year to make it economical, to show that we can establish and re-establish highly degraded land or build fertility, advanced fertility in reasonable land. So this system, the principles, the natural principles of what we're showing you apply to the temperate, apply to the subtropical, apply to the tropical uh, with some minor amendments, but the natural processes remain the same. So enjoy the series of videos, this four or five videos that we're going to present. Uh, we will repeat a lot of information in each video uh, to embed that information in your, uh, in your perspective, in your psychology, uh, in your education. And understand that this is a way that we can use agriculture as a soil building process. Uh, rather than a soil degeneration process, that we can use natural processes to build fertility at low cost rather than using expensive inputs to always boost our production. So we're looking at fast forward agriculture, we're looking at biological, biological agriculture, we're looking at organic agriculture, uh, we're including systems of heritage agriculture, we're including systems of uh, synergistic systems, we're including intercropping, we're including agroforestry. Um, so the complexity of this uh, is uh, selected as a natural process of what we're doing and some elements of each of these systems overlap. So we're using elements of all these systems to build fertility in a fast forward way. So thank you very much and enjoy the series of videos and uh, remember to look up the site trustnature.com.au and if you want further information of course you can just drop me an email so thank you Paul Taylor signed off. so you can see that the food forest is on the other side of the fence the fence is protecting the food forest from kangaroos uh, the cowpea and the uh, Philippines food potato has escaped the fence I thought it would be heavily impacted. I thought, the, I thought the kangaroos would eat this, but they're not. There's enough around here because we're in the middle of a national park, basically. But look at how this is encroaching now on the lawn and taking over. So we're going to let the sweet potato come out to this edge here, at least, and, and it'll let it take over the lawn. And then once the sweet potato is established, then we remove the, uh, the very aggressive cowpea. Then we can use this as another line of planting. And, and we might fence this in so we can protect it from kangaroos. But look at the incredible biomass, uh, once again, that we're creating. And this is pretty much effortless. Uh, this is just by not interfering with nature. This is the natural rampant nature of the cowpea that we're not interfering with, except that we do chop it down and use it for mulch. Uh, and now this will be the fourth time that we've chopped it down and used it for mulch in the system. And we're really building fertility from the bar really pretty barren, hard clay. Uh, now we have uh, uh, some good uh, fertility in the soil. We have some good color in the soil. We have some root depth in the, in the trees. And we're quickly establishing a system. 
and once again this is uh, uh, this this was lawn and very hard clay uh, in January of 2017 when we started this project and this is now uh, May of 2018 so it's basically a year later thanks a lot. vital compost stack this is made as an inoculant this is the mother culture of all the rest of our compost we make the compost tea out of this and we spread on our other compost this is our bulk compost which we make with mini excavator but we use this finished product of the mother pile as the inoculum for this because this is the handmade compost this has kelp in it this has fish entrails in it this has uh, rock phosphate in it uh, this has uh, lots of weeds lots of grass clippings straw uh, uh, lots of cow pee uh, some fresh sorghum etc all the things that we collected from the local area at low price uh, because what we want is a high diversity. The high diversity of inputs ensures the high diversity of microorganisms. And here, BioVital Compost, Trust Nature's system of sustainable soil management, is based in inoculum compost that we use as a medium for growing a high diversity of microorganisms. That diversity of microorganisms is our primary workforce. And that primary workforce works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and all its job is, is to create a fertile soil in an aerobic environment. So the size of this compost is important because we need to make sure that the air can breathe through the system. So we select for aerobic microorganisms, microorganisms, not anaerobic microorganisms. Fungi is the structure builder for soils and it's the basis of delivering nutrients to plants as mycorrhizae, fungi breathes oxygen. Its life depends on structured soils. It's aerobic. So we build compost piles that are aerobic, so they select for aerobic organisms that structure soil, that build fertility, that protect and support our productive plants. Structured soils with high organic matter, with a high diversity of microorganisms, are essential to achieve profitable production in a biological agricultural system with very few inputs. So you can see that this is the bulk compost here, which we let dry out a bit because we're moving it, we don't want it too heavy, and we're sifting some of it for sale. You can see that this area here looked just like that area an hour ago. But we've collected a tremendous amount of material for making compost out of this area. Some of it goes inside the fence for mulch, and some of it goes into making the compost pile. So you can see the remnants of our dried kelp, the bulk compost, the inoculum compost in the stack. You can see the amount of energy embodied in the compost because we get this tremendous biomass in a couple of months in very poor soil. And we'll continue the tour of how we chop and drop and, and revive or replenish or expose the food forest to light now and, and heavily mulch it with the legumes. So thanks and we'll... Okay, a couple hours ago this custard apple was completely covered. Didn't even know it was here. And now you can see uh, that, it's, that it, it's, it has a very expressive year of growth. Uh, this is about 10 months old, planted 10 months ago. Uh, this was in a 12 inch pot, so it was, it was uh, a bit over knee high when we started, but just a whip had no branches at all. And now you can see it's developing. And that means the roots developing too and the soil's actually getting very good. Um, if we look down here at the old clay soil, that gray clay soil, we can see that, that we have, well, we have earthworms, we have lots of earthworms, and uh, we have color in the soil and lots of mulch, and, and, and we've got fertility now. Uh, we've had three or four or maybe even five species of mushrooms growing in here, so that's a sure sign that we're getting aerobic conditions in soil structure. 
And you can see behind me, this chop and drop has produced an enormous amount of mulch that we'll put around the fruit trees. And of course, the legume root system will start releasing some of its nutrients and nitrogen. And then we'll get a flush of growth here. And we'll expect these fruit trees to really triple in size uh, by, by Christmas. Uh, because all this nutrient bank is now here, the roots are established, the sun has been able to penetrate. This avocado, we didn't even know it was here. Uh, and you can see that it's competed quite well with uh, the very heavy, aggressive uh, uh, cover crop. Uh, the papayas, you can see that they're producing fruit. And as we move through this system, uh, we, we will get the benefits of all the work that's going into it. But the idea of this is that we can build a lot of soil fertility. We can grow a lot of biomass. We can get a lot of organic matter above and below the ground. We can grow our own mulch and we can get the fruit trees competing from the very beginning uh, so that they're established by the time we do the, the chop and drop after, well, this is now the fourth chop and drop. So uh, you get a lot of material and you get established trees. And now we'll keep the cowpea down. We'll start planting productive crops, pumpkins and melons and, and beans and capsicum and eggplant amongst this system. Uh, instead of just the rampant cover crop. But the rampant cover crop has taken care of so much because there's been, uh, there's been several months, uh, not in a row, but there's been two months at a time, there's been a month at a time uh, where I couldn't come here at all. In fact, we had one of the driest uh, uh, summers on record. Uh, we, we had 36 degrees, 37 degrees in heat. Uh, I haven't been able to irrigate this because I was away. And, and all this survived. Uh, out of the 40, 45 or 46 trees here, we've lost two trees. In fact, uh, one of those trees is uh, sprouting from the root again. So we've only actually lost one tree uh, in all this rampant ground cover. So it's a relatively low cost, very low maintenance soil recovery system where we're establishing food plants and a, 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 a genuine food forest uh, with, with a very low effort uh, and, and that's essential uh, to Christmas Island uh, because of the, the cost of labor, uh, because of the variations, of the, the dramatic variations in uh, wet and dry and the need to control soil temperature because in the equator, on the equator, you don't really get a cool night. So the soil temperature doesn't have a chance to drop so we get consistently, consistently, consistently warm soils um, that can stress plants and, and do stress plants if we can't get water to them especially or if we don't have mulch or ground cover amongst it. So we want to maintain a ground cover. Those ground covers can be productive crops. We can use beans, we can use soybeans, we can use melons, we can use uh, pumpkins, etc. There's a huge variety of things. We can use eggplants, we can use capsicum, we can use chili. Uh, in fact, there's chilies right there. There's capsicums in the mix. Uh, there's turmeric in the mix. There's ginger in the mix. and in this system, it will uh, come forward with uh, productive variety uh, now that we've done what should be the, uh, the final major chop and drop in this system. After this, we'll start getting moving the cowpea out and moving productive plants in. So thanks, and uh, we'll continue the clip over the next couple of days.